Welcome to our review of the solar system. So when we're considering our solar system, it consists of the sun, which is a star, planets, which are the spherical objects in orbit around the sun, moons, which orbit around the planets, minor planets, which fall into the category of anything not a planet or a comet that are in orbit around our sun. So these are made up of asteroids and dwarf planets and then comets, which are made of ice and dust that orbit the sun. So our solar system can actually be broken up into the inner planets and the outer planets. If we consider the inner planets first of all, we've got four of them, Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. All of the inner planets are rocky and they all have an atmosphere of some description. There are some key differences between them, however. Mercury and Mars have very thin atmospheres and the atmosphere on Venus is mainly carbon dioxide and it rains sulfuric acid so neither of them are particularly hospitable atmospheres to be around. Earth has one moon which if you look into the sky then you can see that one. Mars has two moons and Mercury and Venus have no moons. The outer planets in our solar system are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. Now Jupiter and Saturn are gas giants and Uranus and Neptune are ice giants. But all of the outer planets have a lot of moons and they all have rings. Another key feature of our solar system is the asteroid belt, which is located between Mars and Jupiter. Now, asteroids are pieces of rock that are left over from the formation of the solar system. But also within the asteroid belt, we've got a dwarf planet called Ceres, which is at the bottom there. Obviously, the key thing in our solar system for us to actually exist other than the Earth is the sun. And if we think about how our sun formed, then it formed from a huge cloud of dust and gas that was pulled together by gravity. And what happened as they were being pulled together by gravity, then it got very hot in the core. So eventually, as those particles were moving faster, as they were getting hotter, they moved fast enough for nuclear fusion to occur. So they started joining together. Now what we've got is a balance between the gravity pulling particles inwards and the expansion of the hot gases outwards, which is good news because it means our sun is nice and stable at this point in time. The last thing we need to know about is the life cycle of stars. So the first thing we can look at is their formation because the formation of a star is the same no matter how big they are. So we start off with a huge cloud of gas, which is mainly hydrogen, called a nebula, and gravity pulls that together. What we get then is a large ball of gas at the center of the cloud, and as it gets denser, more gas is pulled in by gravity and the ball gets hotter and hotter until eventually it's known as a protostar. That protostar continues to grow larger until nuclear fusion occurs, and that means we're in our main sequence star phase. And that's the stable part of the life cycle, which is where our sun currently is. The next part of the star's life is the death of the star. And what happens at this point is dependent upon the mass of it. So if we consider small stars like our sun, first of all, then in their death phase, they cool and expand to become something called a red giant. So to give you an idea in the top left there, you can see our sun and a red giant next to it for comparison of the size. So when we say giant, we mean giant. Then what happens is the outer layers of the star break away and form a planetary nebula like the one on the left there and eventually the white hot core of the star is all that remains and that's known as a white dwarf and it's not the big thing in the middle there it's that teeny tiny little speck with the arrow pointing to it and over time the white dwarf will cool until eventually it just fades away the other scenario is what happens to the death of a large star so they still expand and cool, but these ones grow much larger to become a red supergiant. The star will then explode as a supernova, and during the supernova, the core of the star is crushed down by these immense gravitational forces to form a very dense star made of neutrons, which has the really surprising name of a neutron star. 
and the neutron star itself spins very fast and sends pulses of radio waves to Earth that we can detect. The last potential thing that could happen to a star is that if it's a very big star, the core can be crushed out into a tiny space to form a black hole, where the forces of gravity are so immense that not even light can escape it. So all I've given you here is just a little summary of the life cycle of the stars. The small stars at the top and the larger stars at the bottom. So make sure that you can recall the stages in their life cycle. But if nothing else, throw in the fact that gas gets pulled together by the word gravity. If you're describing the life cycle of a star without the word gravity, you've gone horribly wrong in the first instance. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can compare the objects in our solar system. You can describe how our sun formed and describe the life cycle of stars, which are small and also large.